Hello, uh, everybody, uh, and welcome. Hi, Caitlin, how are you? I'm very good, Royal Highness. Hi, Virginia, how are you? It's nice to see you again. Thank you so much, I'm glad to be here. Brilliant, now, of course, you're both uh, part of the Queen's Young Leaders. And what would be lovely, uh, Caitlin, uh, is if you could begin to tell us some of the work that you've done Yes, so um, I run an organisation called Jaziri Australia. So we are a youth-led organisation operating in Commonwealth countries. So we're all about trying to change the face of leadership by providing young women with opportunities to be political leaders and policy change makers. Wonderful. Now, ma'am, I know for you, gender equality is something that you're very passionate about. Why do you think it's important to have organisations like this working at the grassroots to really empower uh, the next generation of female leaders? There's no end of passion from young people um, and there's no end of desire to want to do something. But often I think they find, um, what's my next step? How do I get involved? So for Caitlin to have created an organization to put them in front of people where they can start to feel that they're having an influence is astonishing. So Virginia, can you tell us a bit about the work that you do? Yes, I run an organization called Girls Arise for Change, uh, which works to promote girls to health and education by ending social and patriarchal practices that undervalues women's potential here in Malawi. I actually got to visit um, Virginia's, one of Virginia's projects when I was in Malawi. Um, so I saw firsthand what they're actually doing with these young women. Um, and I think what's really important here is that she's helping them to create uh, training and business models that actually are appropriate to where they are. We need to train more women to become financially independent. That is by not by giving them money to run businesses, but by giving them the skill. Because when we give them a skill, the skill is a life, it's a lifetime asset for them than giving them money. Um, often women's voices are not heard at the top and we don't have a seat at the table, not in the number that we should. Um, how do we ensure that that becomes the norm, especially with everything that we see happening with COVID and the fact that actually we are regressing? Better policy and better outcomes are achieved when women are in the room, when more than half the population are in the room and getting to make sure that all of their voices, all of their issues are represented. Brilliant. I love that. And, and ma'am, would you like to add to that? Uh, that can become a bit of a fatigue when it comes to talking about women's rights, women's issues and everything. And so I'm quite keen to try and move the discussion into a place where it becomes a much more level playing field because it is a win-win. It's not one against the other. If we now can look at education, particularly in, in countries where virtual education isn't as easily available, um, what do we do to ensure that our young girls don't get left behind through this process? Where I am right now in Malawi, the majority of schools do not have online learning because many, many students do not have laptops. We can't even talk about internet. So as we are going back to uh, developing education uh, through this COVID pandemic, we really have a very big job because we've had a setback. It is a real worry because there's obviously a lot of the Commonwealth countries that have got, we're still trying to get girls into education. Where are the gaps going to be there? What is going to be happening to those girls right now? Young people in particular, they have those innovation mindsets. They, they want to support and they want to connect. I always say as women, we need to learn that we are not competitors, but we are supporters of each other's progress. So as women, we should be able to share each other's skills. Women should be, those that are in higher positions, should open up to give opportunities to those, to those women that are coming, those women that are inspiring. And the Commonwealth is a great force for good. And I think if we can keep coming together and, and talking to each other and using the technology that's now at our fingertips, but really has proven its worth during this last year, let's use that as a force for good. On that note, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Virginia. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, leading this conversation with you all and continue the fantastic work.